Hey, it's DC here with dclayborn.com, and just wanted to say thanks for checking out uh, Genesis Strength TV and today's episode of DC Speaks. So to uh, kind of refresher, this is part two of um, Josh's question about how he can put on more lean muscle mass, but not lose the speed and athleticism that he's worked so hard to achieve um, so he can play a different position in rugby. Part one, if you didn't check it out, we talked and kind of covered some basic nutrition quality or nutrition rules and, and guidelines that he can apply to make sure that the nutrition side is giving him exactly what he needs. And then today we're going to crank on the, uh, the training and, and get rolling with that one. So training-wise is going to be kind of your three basic things that, that anytime a, an athlete question comes in that's more general, we're really going to go back to those three uh, training philosophies that include strength, power, mobility, and work capacity. So now since Josh is talking more about putting on size and making sure that he stays as fast, if not getting faster, um, while he puts on that muscle, the fourth one, work capacity, kind of doesn't apply here today, so let's cut that out. Um, it applies at a, a minimal level, which doesn't really even need to warrant the time to talk about in this one. So strength-wise, you already said you were, you know how strong you were. It was something I think like a 475-pound squat at 190 pounds, uh, 210 or 220. I don't, sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, pound bench. So you have that maximal strength that I'm always preaching, especially at 190. Even if you get up to 210, you still are going to have, um, you're going to be considered extremely strong at that size, um, even at your new weight. So the main thing we want to do with the strength is you want to keep hammering it and maybe not push so much as to continue to get stronger, but at the very minimum, maintain what you have and focus on another aspect. What that mean is typically every athlete that comes to us in terms of uh, becoming a better athlete or you know dominating their sport, the number one thing we start everyone focusing on is maximal strength. This is always pretty much the number one thing that we try to make sure every athlete builds up. It's the quickest way to, to towards athleticism, and it's the quickest way to make sure that they never plateau. But with the strength levels you already have, we're actually going to focus on number two and three more so so you don't lose the power and the athleticism while you're putting on size. Um, make sure that you maintain that strength. Keep doing what you're doing on the strength side to keep those numbers up there. But tweak it a little more, focusing towards power. Um, footwork, which I guess would be a subset kind of a power. If you do a powerful, I know it's not exact, but it's going to be, you know, speed is going to correlate back into the power they have. If you're adding weight and you're not used to moving with that weight, I don't care how powerful you are, the footwork needs to be there so you can maximize it. So we'll put footwork under there. And mobility so you're not getting totally bound up with that added muscle so you can't function, twist, run, jump, uh, be an athlete. So power is going to be the main thing that you want to really continue to work on so the muscle that you are putting on is powerful, is explosive, be a great rugby player. So uh, power wise, you know, we stick with jumps. Um, we want to do a ton of jumps, plyos, especially at that strength level you already have. That's just power waiting to be unlocked. Plyos, jumps, Plyos, jumps, med ball throws, footwork, speed ladder, don't really focus on it, but just make sure that your feet know how to carry you with through that added weight, uh, you know, with that extra weight on you. Because you play rugby, in terms of power, we want to start adding in stuff if you're if if you have the ability to, strongman. Sandbag cleans. Sandbag cleans, keg cleans, presses, tire flips are huge rough for you. Stuff like that. Stuff that's going to put your body in an uh, uncomfortable position and teach you how to 
be powerful while while fighting a uh, a weight that's constantly moving and not static like it would be on a barbell. We like to cap it at no more than than 24, 25 reps with a little bit of rest in between it. The best way to split that up is the more demanding the exercise is, is the less, the more sets you want to do and the less reps you want to do. So higher the intensity, higher intensity, lower intensity, lower intensity will be higher reps, lower sets, higher intensity is going to be higher sets, and lower reps, and that way you're getting more, that way you're going to make sure that every rep that you do is powerful, you're going to be able to get more rest in in between sets. And no matter which one you're doing, higher or lower, anywhere from 15 to 25 reps total for that exercise um, during that workout. So now, now that we've kind of talked more about the power and stuff and the footwork, the final thing I would add in, and I would add in short sprints, um, anywhere between 10, 20, 30 meters. Uh, I would never go over 30 because we're training it more for a sport and we don't need the work capacity. Um, with the sprints though, we want to make sure that they're quality sprints. Kind of is the same thing as the higher intensity. You want to rest and receive a, a maximal recovery so your body has that burst and as you continue to gain weight, utilizes it and, and figures out how to extract that power from, this, from that, that, the new muscle so you're getting the most out of it. So a good rule of thumb in terms of resting for sprints, again, this is just a uh, like a baseline. You can adjust it as needed. If you feel better sooner, get on. If you still need a few seconds or another minute or so, that's fine as well. We do one minute for ten meter, for every ten meters run. And I know that sounds extreme, but again, this is just pure speed. You're not running a ton of them. And because of that, everyone has to be picture perfect and explosive and powerful and as fast as possible. Sprints, um, plyometrics, other types of jump variations, med ball throws, strong man lifts. Those are going to be what's going to carry. Um, those are going to be what's going to really, if not, Increase the power that you have, especially as you're putting on size. That power and output should shoot up, but at the very minimum, maintain what you have so the extra weight that you put on doesn't hinder or set you back in terms of speed and athleticism. And then finally, kind of the big thing is mobility. You want to make sure that you're doing your mobility drills, good full recovery, uh, cool down, good active warm up, so that the weight that you do put on and the muscle that you do add to your frame isn't going to bind you up and kind of tie you down in any way so you get the you're able to continue to move and be fluid and carry that strength that you've already had um, that's exceptional and the power that you're continuing to increase and carry that onto the field. So I hope that helps in terms of what you need to do on the training side. Again, if you didn't have a chance to check out part one where we kind of hammer the nutrition, I'll give you that link below so you can check that out. I appreciate you taking the time to check out part two of this. Josh, thanks again for, check, uh, for submitting the question, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.